Alrighty, so the final game from match week number 34 is in the books, and well, yeah, this is not a big surprise, isn't it? I mean, I'm pretty sure if you are a DC fan, you are not surprised one bit uh, that coming into this game against the Union, even though there was hope that maybe they can end that narrative that they, they are just getting hurt stomped by the Union every time when this matchup is happening, that it can come to an end so they can help their playoff cases. Yeah, the Union had other ideas, though... What's kind of interesting about this game is I thought DC actually started well in this one. Uh, early on in this game, second minute, Priani with DC first shot, but he puts it high before Santos hit one right to Blake. And like I said, it was a promising start for, for DC. They got a couple of half-decent chances. Uh, Blake would deny click from long range. The Union clearly had not started on time up to this point. And that's kind of surprising to see because, you know, after that 5-1 beatdown that they had against NYCFC, you would think that that would at least give them the momentum heading into this game. Though, you could also say that maybe uh, this is kind of a bit of a letdown that they, 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 they're they suffering. Though, again, the other argument would be they're facing against the team that is pretty much much maybe their favorite team to face because they just have so much own ownage lately for DC. And then in the 13 minute, as soon as I wrote that they have not started on time... Guess what they did? They scored the opening goal of the game. It's uh, Mikael Uru. He scored from Solvin to give the Union a 1-0 lead. And really, that was the first shot for the Union. And really, the first attack of the, the game for the Union. And just completely against the run of play. And then, two minutes later, Daniel Gastet would make it 2-0. And I even wrote, DC looked like they completely rattled. And that, that has to be frustrating if you're DC knowing that, you know, you get off to a promising start to this game. You look like you got what's going to get the opening goal. And then you just get sucker punched. Punch, and next thing you know, they find themselves 2 nothing and gave up these two sloppy chances and found themselves 2 nothing down. And, and I'm pretty sure every DC fans are also thinking, oh no, here we go again, isn't it? This is going to get u ugly, isn't it? Uh, again, between us and, and the Union. Remember, they, they lost to them, them uh, by, by a, a score combined score of 13-1 just a couple of years ago. Uh, Shroud then tried to chip Blake from his own half, but he missed way wide there. So, yeah, Jared Shroud tried to do, do a bit of a Lucas Oriano kind of moment. Or was it an Anderson Julio kind of moment? Because Anderson Julio did uh, do that in, in the la last game a a as well. So, yeah, I mean, again, this is something we've seen more and more now nowadays. And there's been more times or not we have seen that actually went into the back net rather than, than just missing it way wide. Uh, Sullivan would then put one uh, to Bono from long range before Benteke hits one right to Blake. It was a relatively quiet game uh, for Benteke in, in this one. I thought the Union, for the most part, did a good job in terms of making sure Benteke was not a threat in the air because if you talk about a guy that is the most threatening in the air right now in MLS, uh, Christian Benteke is probably right up there in, in terms of the, the number one list, and there's a reason why. He's literally at the top of the Golden Boot race right now. But the shots were 5 free for DC up to this point, which feels low considering the fact that I thought it was a good amount of chance for both of these teams up to this point. Uh, Baribo then back heals it into the side netting before Priani puts it over from long range. McLean then puts it just wide after DC uh, turned the ball over in their own half. But we do head to halftime with the Philly Union leading 2-0. Uh, they didn't waste any time to make it 3-0 heading in the second half because after uh, Bono denied Wagner on the free kick, uh, there he is again, Ty Baribo. You know he's going to get on, on, on the score sheet. I mean, it, it's been kind of almost given any time when the Union are scoring a lot of goals. Baribo is going to be on the score sheet. And he was here from Solvin to make it 3 nothing in favor of the Union. Just criminal defending there from DC. I mean, Solvin basically just dribbled through through that DC defense. The, the defending has been a huge problem this season uh, for DC. And part of that is by design because of the way way that part of the same team likes to push man forward. They get caught out. Um... Uh, at, at, at the back as well, and especially against the Union side at times, they look dangerous on the transition. Yeah, this always felt like it was not going to be a good matchup uh, for for DC and and a a tactics that you know I know Troy the same want want to live and die by that tactics, but man, they they uh, they were at times in this game they were just getting cut open in in their their own end either on the transition or the fact that they commit way too many man uh, for it. But uh, Bono then tips over Wagner's free kicks. Cross, uh, it was all Union up to this this point. And again, this could get even more ugly uh, for DC. Santos then flashed one wide from close range before he denied, uh, or Bono denied Uru uh, as he, he kick-saved that one onto the post. Uh, the game has really started to open up. It started to become a bit end, 
the end. Uh, Herrera then puts one into the stands. And then on the other end, Bono had to deny McGlynn uh, from close after a lightning counterattack from the Philly Union. Uh, in the 63rd minute, the post would deny the home shots off off a deflection. So there's been a couple posts that was hit uh, in this one as well. And again, chances were coming in both ends. But who can get that, that next goal? Well, the answer is the Philadelphia Union as in the 69th minute. Nice. Uh, Daniel Gastek would score from Baribo to make it 4-0 for the Union. It came off the WTF turnover there for from, from DC, and they were punished because of that. Uh, Blake then denied Benteke from close range. That was probably the maybe one of the, the few few chances that Benteke had, and probably uh, the best chance for him to, to add, add number 20 in the, 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 the goal tally this, this season. But Andre Blake, he's making sure that, yeah, not only he wants to win in this game, but he wants to clean... Clean sheet in, in this one. Uh, Bono then denied Baribo as he also pushed that one on to, to the post. So what? That's now three or four posts that's been hit so far in, in this game. Um, that's kind of like the same amount number that we saw in the game between the Red Bulls and, and, and Atlanta. Uh, but in in the 86th minute, we then had some coming together. And again, when you have a blowout game like this, frustration is going to start to mount, and especially for DC. They're going to be start to be very frustrated. Elliot and Baji basically had some... Some toys words with each other uh, as there was a little coming together. And then in the second minute of stop sign, man, this would have been, been a big story if Kevin Sullivan actually puts this one in. And what's even a bigger story, this was going to be assisted by, by Quinn Sullivan. So you could have had the Sullivan brother getting the assist for the fir first time in MLS history. And yeah, I mean, Super Report would have just completely exploded. That would have been a huge headline, but it wasn't meant to be. But what it was meant to be, was the Union once again dunking on DC United? Like I'm pretty sure they they hope they wish they could play them a couple more times to help their cause in the playoffs. But one thing for sure is that I think this win have now got them them above the red line as they pass Montreal in that spot. They get a four nothing win uh, in this one. Shots in this one, 18 shots for the 16 that DC had, 10 shots on goal for the five that DC had, six shots off turn for the four that the Union has, three shots off block for the five that DC had, and possession wise 50 percent. For both of these teams, and it's safe to say that you know the union look like they they're starting to be back at their best. I mean, these last couple of games, they they started to look like the union that we we know of, which could be a a, a team that is a buzzsaw in front front of goal. I mean, they've scored nine goals in in these uh, last two two games. I mean, they're starting to become a, a free scoring team, just like what we saw a couple of years ago when they were at at their best and right on on q2 because you know they can have a chance that not only they can get that ninth position they can actually even go as high as eighth place because toronto has been kind of struggling uh lately so yeah this is definitely good news uh for the union but obviously i know if you 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 ask any union fan it doesn't ma matter about if they get to the playoffs it's that we're gonna see how they, they'll do because like i said uh this i don't think change anything that this might be the last year we might see this the this cur current core before they go through a bit of a retool and we'll see how they'll do once they do face against the 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 best of best but for dc again i'm pretty sure they're they, i think this is the last time that both of these teams face against each other i'm pretty sure dc is happy about that because again it, it just feels like it's a black hole every time when they face against the 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 union and they just kind of have to brush that this one away and, and push on because again they're still in the fit fit of of the the playoff rate race as well and they, they show some promise in in this game at, as well but this also is kind of another game where you know when you're facing against a team that have your number and you're you're the underdog you have to put away your chances dc didn't put away their chances they put away their chances maybe things could have been different they didn't and they were were, were they paid the heavy price uh for it as the resort but there you have it. That is pretty much it in terms of the review of this last game to conclude match week number 34. As always, let me know in the comments below what do you think of this review. And also tomorrow, I'll be finishing up the review for match week number 34, looking at the last five games uh, before uh, we're going to be, be heading into match week number 35 next next week. And keep in mind, I am going to be going to, to uh, Miami for about uh, a week or so. Uh, not only visiting friends, but also actually going to be, be, be seeing Messi in, in person. Well, knock on wood on that. Hopefully nothing happened in, 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 in the middle of the week as I'll be going to that Inter-Miami versus, versus Charlotte game. But yeah, uh, it, that means that, you know, I'm next starting next week, I'm back doing review on the road, which means back at doing review at the hotel with a little small 
small board so if you guys enjoy that uh back when i did that in in august uh then stay tuned for more more of that starting uh next week but either way hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time